Hi, Cleo. Hi, Waverly. This time, we're going to read The Darkest Dark by Chris Hadfield. I don't know if you have this book already, but I thought it was a really good choice for you guys because um, Chris Hadfield is a Canadian and he's an astronaut and that makes him pretty special. And um, I think this book is going to be really neat. It's got a glow-in-the-dark cover, so this moon will glow in the dark, just like your t-shirts. This is called The Darkest Dark. by Chris Hadfield and Kate Fillion, but it's illustrated by the Fan Brothers. Ooh, that's a nice illustration. Look at that. I like how they show that it's nighttime with, looks like the sun is setting because it looks like a sunset with purple and the lights are on inside the house. So that's how I know it's nighttime. I can see the lights in the house. Chris was an astronaut an important and very busy astronaut. When it was time to take a bath, he told his mother, I'd love to, but I'm saving the planet from aliens. <laughs> Pictures are funny. When it was time to get out of the bath and go to bed, he told his father, politely, because astronauts are always polite, sorry, no can do, I'm on my way to Mars. An astronaut's work is never done, so astronauts do not like to sleep. But their parents do. You're a big boy now, said Chris's father. You have to sleep in your own bed. And Chris tried. He really did. But his room was dark. Very, very dark. The kind of dark that attracts the worst sort of aliens. Oh, looks like he's very scared in his room at night. He's imagining all kinds of things in there. But his parents meant it. Chris was going to sleep in his own bed tonight. His mom and dad checked under his bed and in the closet and even in his underwear drawer. They declared the room 100% alien free. They tucked Chris in. They turned on the nightlight. They even gave him a special bell to ring if he was nervous. Clang, 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 clang. They took away the bell. Mm, guess he was using it too much. And then his father said something that worried Chris even more than the dark did. One more peep, young man, and I'm afraid we'll all be too tired to go next door tomorrow. But tomorrow would be a very special, would be a special day, a very special day. Chris had to go next door. His life pretty much depended on it. So Chris stayed in his own bed without a peep. It took a long time to fall asleep, but when he did, he had his favorite dream. He flew his spaceship all the way to the moon. That's a good dream to have. Brought his dog. The next day seemed to last forever. But finally, when the moon was shining over the lake and the summer wind was ruffling the leaves of the trees, Chris ran next door. The house was already full of people all gathered around the TV, the only TV on the whole island. Chris found a spot where he could see through the crowd and what he saw was astronauts, real live astronauts on the actual faraway moon. They were wearing puffy white suits and jumping for joy, jumping so high because there was so much less gravity there. The grown-ups huddled around the sorry, the grown-ups huddled around the TV were amazed. Their whole lives long, they'd never expected to see this sight. Even Chris, who had been to the moon just the night before, was amazed. 
He'd never really noticed how dark it was there. Outer space was the darkest dark ever. Oh, this isn't, there's no words on this page, but they're out on the dock looking at the bright, bright, bright moon. That night, Chris did a little experiment. He turned off all the lights in his room, even the nightlight. It was still dark, very, very dark. There were still shadows that looked a little, well, alien. Nothing had changed, but Chris had changed. He'd seen that the darkness of the universe was so much bigger and deeper than the darkness in his room, but he was not afraid. He wanted to explore every corner of the night sky. For the first time, Chris could see the power and mystery and velvety black beauty of the dark. Look at that sky, wow. So many stars and different things. And he realized you're never really alone there. Your dreams are always with you, just waiting. Big dreams about the kind of person you want to be. Wonderful dreams about the life you will live. Dreams that actually can come true. That's the end. And then if, at the back of the book, you can read about Chris Hadfield. It tells you about him. And then um, after that, there's a message from Chris Hadfield, the message from the writer. And there's some pictures of him um, in, in his astronaut suit and in space and just in his life tells you all about it. I really like this story because I remember when my dad told me the story of how he watched um, the people on the moon when he was younger on TV, just like Chris Hadfield had, and it made a big difference in his life, and he always loved learning about space and stuff like that. And so here at the back, it says about Chris Hadfield. Growing up, Chris Hadfield spent every summer at his family's cottage on Stag Island in southern Ontario. Just like, just, like just about everyone else on the island, the Hadfields didn't have a television set. So late in the evening of July 20th, 1969, Chris and his family went to a neighbor's cottage to watch the Apollo 11 landing on TV. When he saw Neil Armstrong step onto the surface of the moon, Chris's life changed forever. He knew he wanted to be an astronaut too. At the time, it was impossible. For one thing, he wasn't a grown-up yet. For another, all of NASA's astronauts were American. Canadians weren't even allowed to apply for the job. But Chris decided to start getting ready, just in case things ever changed. He worked hard at school, learned everything he could about science, rockets, and space. As a teenager, he learned how to fly gliders, and then after graduating from military college, he became a fighter pilot. Later, he became a test pilot who helped make military aircraft safer. In 1992, almost 23 years after that summer night on Stag Island, Chris's dream came true. The newly formed Canadian Space Agency chose him to be an astronaut. Since then, he has orbited the Earth thousands of times. That means he went around thousands of times over three separate missions. Most recently, Chris was in space for nearly five months from December 2012 to May 2013 when he served as the first Canadian commander of the International Space Station. So that's a pretty special job. Today, Chris travels the world teaching people about space, sharing the beautiful photographs he took and playing the songs he recorded on the space station. On summer nights, he likes to sit on his dock on Stag Island, watching for the International Space Station, or the ISS, to pass by overhead. Even in the darkest dark on a moonless night, the spaceship's light is clearly visible. Well, that's pretty neat. I really hope that um, you enjoyed this book because it's really special. It's a really special story to me because it reminds me of my dad. Anyway, yeah, it's your grandpa. Well, thanks, girls. Till the next time.